Cancer is a disease of our genes. Over the course of our lives, we accumulate mutations in our DNA through errors in our internal DNA damage and repair processes, as well as from exposure to external carcinogens such as tobacco smoke, UV radiation from the sun, exposure to environmental factors, and unhealthy behaviours. If enough genetic damage occurs, our cells become dysregulated, grow uncontrollably, and can become cancerous. Many of the risk factors that are known to cause cancer can be modified by changing our behaviours, and around 4 out of 10 cancers can theoretically be prevented. Scientists have been studying the links between infectious diseases and cancer for many years. It has taken a long time to identify infectious agents that are causative factors for human cancers versus those that are risk factors for cancers. This is because no human cancers arise as an acute or immediate consequence of infection. The latency periods between primary infection and cancer development frequently ranges between 15 to 40 years, meaning that there are a number of other contributing factors over time that can increase the risk of cancer following infection. It is estimated that globally, 15 to 20% of cancers can be attributed to infectious agents. Infections that cause cancer are common among humans. However, in most cases, the immune system will clear these infections before they have a chance to manifest any further. However, if this immune clearance does not occur, these chronic infections can cause damage to our DNA and lead to detrimental changes within our cells and cellular environments that are favorable for the formation of cancer. There are a number of infectious agents that have been identified as contributing causes of cancer. Meaning, if infected with these particular agents, you are more likely to develop certain cancers. These infectious agents include largely viruses, some bacteria, and to a lesser extent, parasites. Human papillomavirus, or HPV, is known to cause primarily cervical and oral cancers. Hepatitis B and C is known to contribute to liver cancer. Human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, is known to increase the risk of some lymphomas and Carposi sarcoma. Epstein-Barr virus, or EBV, is associated with Hodgkin's lymphoma and oral cancers. And finally, the bacteria Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori, is known to cause stomach and duodenal cancers in some cases. Each of these infectious agents contribute to increased cancer risk through slightly different mechanisms. So how do they work? Viruses can cause cancer directly by altering the cell's DNA. Some viruses can insert their own viral genes and oncogenes into the cell's DNA, causing the cell to grow out of control and to make more copies of itself so it can spread and infect more cells. Secondly, infectious agents can cause cancer indirectly through inducing chronic inflammation in the cellular environment, where the production of free radicals resulting from inflammation cause DNA, cell and tissue damage. This can lead to functional changes in the affected cells and the nearby immune cells, rendering them unable to perform their biological roles efficiently, which can eventually allow cancer cells to go unchecked. Thirdly, they can weaken the immune cells directly, making it difficult for them to perform their immunosurveillance activity and their ability to remove other infectious agents from the body. Any of these changes might lead to a higher risk of developing cancer. Thankfully, our growing knowledge of the role of viruses as a risk factor for cancer has led to the development of vaccines to help prevent certain human cancers. But these vaccines only protect against infections if they are given before the person is exposed to the cancer-promoting infectious agent. There are also antiretroviral drugs that can keep viral load at a minimum level, and anti-inflammatory drugs that can be taken to reduce the effects of inflammation on the microenvironment. So let's look at what the current strategies are for each of these major infectious agents that are known to contribute to a potential development of cancer. HPV are a group of viruses that are extremely common worldwide. At some point in our lives, most people will be infected with HPV, and most of the time, the body will eliminate it without symptoms. There are more than 100 types of HPV, of which at least 14 are the high-risk type, that is, potentially cancer-causing. 
Two HPV types, 16 and 18, cause 70% of cervical cancers and precancerous cervical lesions. Many of these HPVs are spread through sexual activity. HPV is a contact infection, meaning that viruses infect the cells near the point of infection without spreading across the body. They are able to infect cells, regulate their genes and oncogenes that they express, and cause DNA mutations that can cause the cell to divide uncontrollably. Without immune regulation, this leads to cancer. It can take up to 20 years for cancer symptoms to appear. Cervical cancer has become much less common in many first world countries as a result of regular screening measures via the pap test, which has been widely available for many years. This test can detect precancerous cells of the cervix that might be caused by HPV infections. These precancerous cells can then be removed to keep the cancer from developing. Or the irregular cells can be monitored more frequently and acted upon immediately when the change is detected. And HPV DNA based testing. Testing for the virus itself also means that screening intervals can be increased from every two years to every five years as it will take years between being infected and the cancer developing. HPV vaccination programs were introduced in many schools in the Western world. The HPV vaccine program is a standard of care for females aged 11 to 18 in many countries, and more recently it has been introduced for young males as well. With all of these prevention strategies in place, Australia is set to be the first country in the world to eliminate cervical cancer as a major public health problem by 2030. However, HPV continues to prevail in low and middle income countries. Conventional cytology based cervical screening programs have largely been ineffective at reducing the cervical cancer burden in low resource settings. In response, alternative strategies have been implemented, such as visual inspection of the area with acetic acid screening. Hepatitis B and C virus cause viral hepatitis, a long-term chronic infection of the liver that increases a person's chance of liver cancer. HPV and HCV are carried through blood and spread from person to person through sharing needles, such as during injection drug use, unprotected sex or childbirth. Today, hepatitis is very much a problem of the developing world and can mostly be found in immigrant populations in the developed world. Most HPV infections can be cleared by the immune system and do not cause any major harm. But in some cases, the body cannot get rid of HPV infections, leading to chronic health problems. In over three out of four cases of HCV, the infection cannot be cleared and the person has it for the rest of their life. The viruses can cause cancer by damaging the DNA, thus causing uncontrolled cell growth. The virus can also cause inflammation of the liver, which impacts on normal cell function. While there is a vaccine to prevent HPV infection, there is currently no vaccine for HCV. The HPV vaccine is recommended for all children and adults who are at risk of exposure. This includes people infected with HIV, men who have sex with men, injection drug users, people with certain medical conditions and occupations such as healthcare workers. There are also safe and effective antiviral treatments that are available for the control of HPV and HCV. By reducing the viral load and its effects on the liver, they have been shown to reduce the risk of developing liver cancer. EBV can be passed on from person to person through saliva, by coughing, sneezing, or by sharing utensils. EBV is a very common virus, with more than 9 out of 10 people being infected worldwide. Once it infects, it stays in certain white blood cells in the body, called B lymphocytes. It can interfere with the cells, causing them to grow and divide out of control. EBV infection increases a person's risk of getting nasopharyngeal cancer and certain types of fast-growing lymphoma such as Burkitt's and Hodgkin's lymphoma. There are currently no treatments for EBV, nor are there any vaccines to help prevent it. However, it is very rare that these infections cause cancer on their own. There are other risk factors involved, such as being immunocompromised or having lower natural immunity. HIV can be spread through blood-to-blood -blood contact, by sharing needles or razors that are not clean, or through unprotected sex with another person that has HIV, and to some extent through childbirth and breastfeeding as well. 
HIV can lead to acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS, which causes immunosuppression of the body's immune system. HIV infects and destroys white blood cells, known as helper T cells, which weakens the immune cells, so the body is less able to perform activities like immune surveillance and to get rid of other infections that can cause cancer. Cancer-causing viruses like Carposi sarcoma herpes virus, human herpes virus 8, Epstein-Barr virus, and HPV can then manifest and stay around for a long time and causes cells to grow and divide out of control, damage DNA, and cause cancer. Thankfully, there are really effective prophylactic and treatment antiretroviral therapies available for HIV, which bring active viral loads down to undetectable levels. Since the widespread availability of ART in the developed world, cases of cancers linked to HIV have significantly reduced, though it continues to be a problem in the developing world. Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori, is a bacterium that infects the lining of the stomach. It is usually spread through contaminated food and water. The infection is no longer very common in the developed countries. For most people, infection won't cause them to have any problems and can easily be treated through antibiotics. However, in some cases, H. pylori can cause long-lasting chronic inflammation in the stomach, known as severe chronic atropic gastritis and stomach ulcers. This chronically inflamed environment can lead to the development of cancer. There are many preventative measures that can be taken to reduce H. pylori-related stomach cancers. For example, improved sanitation, better living conditions, and the widespread use of antibiotics all play contributory roles in reducing the rate of H. pylori infection in the developed nations. There are also a small number of parasites that have been found to be a risk factor for liver and bladder cancer. Liverworms, found in some parts of Asia, are spread through contaminated food, particularly undercooked fish, and can cause bile duct cancer. A bloodworm, common in sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East, lives in the water in these regions, particularly in slow-flowing waters, and can cause bladder cancer. However, more research is needed to understand how parasites cause cancer. It is likely that they disrupt the normal function of cells. For example, they can encourage cells to divide faster or stay alive longer. Inflammation caused by parasites can also lead to damaged cells and dysregulated activity. Most infections themselves are not the primary cause of cancer. There are many contributing factors over time that can help to reduce the risk of cancer, such as eliminating tobacco use and healthy behaviours. While we don't currently have a cure for many cancers, we are certainly getting better and better at prevention. But prevention comes with its own challenges, such as sustained investment, identifying people who have been exposed or at risk, ensuring adequate vaccination and treatment, as well as ongoing monitoring and consideration of the various social determinants of health. Prevention is always better than cure. There are some infectious diseases that can be eliminated through adequate education, vaccination, and early screening programs. And we currently have many in place around the world that can help us reduce the incidence of these infectious agents and thus reduce the risk of developing cancer.